Welcome back, my pack, my tribe, Towing After Dark. Okay. Somehow, it cut out uh, on my listeners, but on my end, it said I was still broadcasting and had like another 40 minutes left. So I'm not entirely sure what happened, but it seems to be fixed now. Um, and I apologize. Uh, what I was doing is... Uh, uh, I explained that my new house is right down the street from one of the locations that was very profound. Uh, as far as our investigations went, we uh, took part in a uh, hosted event with over 300 people that showed up. And uh, it was at Glendale Cemetery in Akron, right down the street from where my new house is. And um, it, it, proceeds are going to repair this beautiful gothic-looking bell tower that they've got. And I was playing an EVP, and I was explaining that uh, uh, when a legitimate EVP comes up, I'm going to pause it and point it out because you're going to hear voices in the background, but those are actually other investigators. It's not ghosts talking. Uh, so, um, just to help you kind of rule those out, I'll stop when it's actually an EVP and explain that it's an EVP. Okay, so, uh, here we go. Now, here, film me for a second. Um, the reason I'm having uh, Becky film me right at the moment is because I want to tell you all something. There's a common theory in the paranormal world that geometric shapes like this are like conduits to paranormal energy. Now, I just laid my hand on this thing, and I can feel it. We can't show that to you, but you can feel it. I'm wearing a thermal. It's not that cold outside. I'm wearing a thermal, and I just got chills when I touched this thing. There's the sound of my phone turning on. Okay, you're about to hear one of the apps on my phone. I believe it's a Spirit Voice app, or it might be the Ghost Fox one. Um, so, just to let you know. Set it up here, it's a little more even. Yeah, like that. Film over that way for a second. Are you picking anything up? I mean, I know actual people. Yeah, I know. Just walked that way because I could have swore I just saw something out of the corner of my eye. If so, I would have missed it as it come up.
Okay, I'm going to plug for my friend here. Um, I'm using the Ghost Vox One, the GV One, invented by my friend Danny at Ghost. That uh, he's an avid ghost hunter, and he's an audio engineer. Owns a company called Big Bird Audio, where you can get these for very cheap, and you only have to pay once, and it's yours. Okay, right there, right off the bat, I turned this app on, and I said, uh, Mr. or Mrs., whatever the last name was, I think it was Field, um, are you here? And immediately, right after I say that, comes across a voice that I, I hear, hi. Like, hi. So, I'm going to rewind that just a bit. Now, I want to point something else out here. Uh, he just answered my question. And I'm, I'm not going to say what I heard because I didn't hear it at the time. It's a lot, a lot easier to hear on the, on the playback of the recorder material than it is in the moment with some of these apps, including the GV1, because of all the white noise and stuff it generates. So once again, I'm going to back it up just a little bit. Okay, I, yet again, i got to point something out. Now, you heard me say, did you say your name was Tom? And he reaffirmed, yes, my name is Tom. But there's actually another name that came across, too. So, I'm going to rewind this a little bit, and I'm going to play it one more time, and then I'm going to tell you what the other name is. Okay, now what I hear right there, I heard the Tom, but what I didn't hear at the time, what I'm hearing now, 
is Simon. I hear the name Simon. And this, where we were, just to kind of explain, is there's this big monolith, kind of, kind of like uh, like a miniature version of uh, the Washington Monument, almost the same shape, much smaller scale, of course, but uh, and it had the family name on there, and evidently the whole family, that's their plot. So, it stands within reason that there was a Tom and a Simon with the same last name. And, in fact, you're about to hear something. So, I'll just go ahead and play it. What? Is that three here or all Stewart? Yeah, we What's, need the first name. Yeah, the first name. Um, Edward, Henry, and then we have a few of Huh. I don't know. I heard it say Tom twice. Uh, yeah. Maybe Tom's a metal man. Could be. Maybe they buried it. He was, uh, his tombstone, his, um, yeah, tombstone says, uh, his first name, but maybe not a middle name. And he always went by his middle name in life. Could be. So, which one was Tom, though? That's a good question. But it's Henry he just said Tom again. Tell him what was your, what's the name on your, your, uh, tombstone? He just answered that question too. So let me rewind it once again a little bit and play it again. His first name, but maybe not a middle name. He always went by his middle name in life. Could be. So which one was Tom though? That's a good question. He just said Tom again. Tell him what was your, what's the name on your, your, uh, tombstone? He just answered and said, Edward. And Edward was one of the names on the tombstones. Now, it kind of petered out after this moment. So I'm going to skip the rest uh, of this particular clip. Because I want to get to the next one. And the reason I want to get to the next one is it was one of the most profound paranormal experiences that Ghost of Paranormal has ever had. And I want to explain why. I've had some really profound uh, uh, paranormal experiences throughout my entire career. But with Ghost of Paranormal specifically, uh, there's two things I'm very proud of. One is that we have never one time walked away from an investigation without some kind of evidence to show for it. Not one time. And two, 
this moment coming up. I'm talking to the Edgerlies and the Battles, are you here? Do you know who we are? <laughs> that right there. And to explain why, I'm going to tell you a story of another episode of Howling After Dark that I did. I did a live EVP show, okay, meaning that I did a EVP session on the air for my listeners. And I asked the question... Because Ghost Wolf has been popping up in all of our EVPs. And uh, also in other teams' EVPs. So I asked this question during this this episode of Howling After Dark. I said... uh, Why do you why do you keep saying Ghost Wolf? Is it because you like us? Yes. Are we kind of like famous or something on your side? They're like yes. Or actually, what he said was, "Oh yeah." I said, "Why is it because our, our approach? Do you find us more approachable?" Yeah. Is it because we don't provoke? Oh, yeah. We may never, uh, uh, you know, achieve the fame of Ghost Hunters. We may never achieve the fame of Ghost Adventures in this life, on our side of things. But we've surpassed them both on their side of things and that to me is worth more than any TV deal ever would be that to me is more bragging rights as far as I'm concerned in in this field of study than anything It's worth more than gold. It's worth more than anything. Because I think that more important than our reputation in this life, in this realm of existence, is even more so on their side of things. Because the more they like us on their side, the more they're going to want to communicate. And it shows, because we've gotten evidence that none of the TV shows have ever gotten. We've gotten evidence that would blow their minds. Absolutely blow their minds. And this isn't like a one-time thing where we got something good. This happens every time we investigate. We get something incredible. Case in point, we recently did a residential case, and we got the name Edward once again, different Edward, of course, this time. Actually, what we got was Eddie, was what came across, and I asked the the lady there about it, and indeed there was an Edward. And it was instant verification that what we got was relevant.
So anyways, continuing on. It's a pleasure to meet you. That's this. I, I was looking at this mark over here with, uh... You know this is me? Francis H. Edwards. Are you here, sir? Okay, first off, they just said Ghost Wolf in that portion of the clip twice. So, that always makes me so proud. Every time we hear that, um, makes me very proud. But, um, he also just answered my question. So, I'm going to roll this back a little bit. Okay, I don't know if you heard it, but I said, are you here, sir? And he goes, I am. So, let's play this one more time. I am. You know, it's kind of weird uh, trying to explain to people that have never really done this or... Uh, people that have like a fear about the paranormal it's really tough to explain to to some people the the pure joy the excitement that you get from doing this line of work now on top of that imagine being one of the people that they always want to talk to. And you'll have some inkling of how I feel. Because it, they always want to talk to us. Like, we have never really had an investigation where we didn't get something. And most of the time, there's EVP as well as visual evidence. And you know me, like, I, I've made it no secret uh, the entire time I've been doing this show that I see them. So, you know, I'm the guy, if you give a camera, if there's something to be seen, I'm going to capture it. That's just how that one goes. And I have multiple times captured things on film, on still photos. And we'll probably always capture things because I'm never going to stop doing this. Yeah, I've had to slow down a bit because of, of you know, having a day job, quote unquote, because um, I work so many days and so many hours a week. It's hard to find time a lot of the time, but I'm never going to stop. Ever. I, I love this life too much. And I know, like, be, even being able to see them the way I do, I'm not going to have all the answers. I have a lot more of an idea, probably, than most people. And, and that's not a dig against most paranormal investigators or even against most people at all. I've been blessed with a very special gift. I feel that in my heart. I know this. 
because even others that see them I don't think see them quite to the extent that I do I think I was extraordinarily blessed with this gift and that's how I see it it's not a curse at all it's a gift because I get to see this beautiful panoramic of the spirit world every single day and that's what it is to me I never focus on the negative that's not to say negative things aren't out there of course they are but nine times out of ten what most people think is negative is is not it's misunderstood because it's trying to get somebody's attention and has gone to extremes to get it but you know wouldn't you if nobody could see you if nobody could hear you wouldn't you go to extremes to get somebody's attention I know I certainly would. So, you know, just keep that in mind. If you if you investigate or, or uh, if you go to a haunted location, uh, whether it's your first time or your thousandth, it doesn't matter. You know, just keep that in mind that, that uh, You know, there. It's just because it scratched somebody doesn't mean it's negative. Just because it threw something across the room doesn't mean it's negative. It means it's trying to get somebody's attention. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, continuing on. You're a captain. Were, were you a captain, sir? No? I would yeah. for the yeah. Yeah. If he wasn't a chaplain, then why would he have the mark of the... He might have just been his spot. He needs to... Well, the face of the or something, please. Besides uh, Francis, who else is here? And they weren't at that point that interested in talking to us. We were just kind of like the middleman for their own conversation so that it could be heard. And, you know, that happens too, and we don't really have a problem with that. Um, but when we're investigating such a large place, we kind of want to see everything. We kind of want to go investigate everywhere. But it's hard when you only have, you know, a couple hours to do everything in. So, uh, we had made the decision at that point to move on to another spot. And it didn't disappoint. Uh, except <laughs> for whatever reason, uh, my EVPs of what happened next are missing um in fact they were missing that night like after we got home i checked and they were gone and i know i recorded it but um for whatever reason it didn't it just didn't come through but it was very profound it was probably one of the most profound 
uh, paranormal experiences my team has ever had because we were actually sitting there looking right at a shadow figure. Um, it was right in front of a, a crypt. We were looking at this shadow figure communicating with it at the same time on that app that you just heard. And asking it questions like what what his name was and uh, if he was one of the Warrens or I think that was the name on the on the crypt it was like Warren or something similar. And we asked if you know they were a member of that family, and he said no. I said, well, then who are you? And he goes, driver. And the entire time I'm looking right at him, and I was the only one that could see him at that point. Like, he was pretty much fully manifested to the point where anybody could see him. And, uh, it was just, it was just awesome investigation, and I really want to go back. And the new house is only, a, you know, it's within really short walking distance. It's right down the street. Like, literally right down the street. Like, maybe a block or two. So I'm hoping to forge a relationship with the caretaker and get us in there so we can investigate some more. But, yeah, so uh, I'm very excited about the new house. Uh, and the fact that it itself is haunted and has such a such a cool history. And the fact that it's uh, going to be home not only to me, but to my furry little brother and my, uh, my uh, furry little son, I guess you could say, my cat, Logan. Um... And it's going to be my home. You know, my home. I, I've i had homes before, but this one will be mine. So, I don't know. It's pretty cool, I think. Anyhow, that is about all I've got for tonight, folks. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh... I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing next week. Um, but I do have some cool news. There's actually an event coming up. And we got the last tickets for it. We're going to be doing an investigation. And we'll have new EVPs to play for you. Because we're going to inve investigate the Kent stage. In Kent, Ohio well-known haunted location at an event hosted by our friends from ectovision paranormal evp i can't wait i'm very excited that's june 24th so uh very excited about that um but until then and until next time i pack my tribe peace out